Hi, welcome back to my channel. Um, so in today's video, we're talking about the collision system for a game engine. Um, but before that, I want to talk about something. As you notice, I'm not really into making programming videos where you see me sit here for an hour typing stuff into the IDE. Um, we know exactly what type of videos I'm talking about. Um, not because those videos aren't needed or not because they aren't great, but um, for example, I'm just using uh, an SAT or an AABB type of collision for my engine. And if you type SAT collision on YouTube right now, um, you'll find a ton of videos in multiple languages explaining the same thing. Um, and it'd be redundant for me to add another one into the mix, right? Um, that being said, this video or my videos in the future will be more for the general audience as I'm sure the 63 of my subscribers are just members of family and friends and not all studied the things I study. So I'll try to make this video uh, more entertaining and um, as simple as possible but not simpler. So if you always like to play video games uh, and wondering how they work or maybe you're building an engine yourself um, and you need an understanding of what a collision system is rather than just um, copy-pasting codes, um, this video is going to be for you. Uh, yeah, so that's a quick update for how the channel functions. Um, roll the intro. So, collision is what happens when two things collide, right? Um, now, in real life, it's easy to see. I mean, the fact that uh, my chair is kind of holding my weight from being um, pulled to the center of the earth. And collision is also why we have doors. This happens, of course, because our hands and the chair and the walls are all made up of atoms, right? I mean, this is common sense stuff. <laughs> and if you zoom in closely to your hands and the walls, um, you'll see that these atoms, they can't pass through each other. <coughs> Sorry. So that is what's stopping you from moving through walls or moving through another person. So that in itself is a collision system, uh, but for a universe. So for a video game, we're trying to imitate this type of collisions that we see in real life. So we're trying to include real life physics into our game um, to give our game a degree of realism. <laughs> but what's in the video game don't have atoms, right? Um, I mean, of course we can simulate atoms and give it to these characters in our video game, but it'll be too overkill and uh, we need a quantum computer to run such games. <laughs> um, yeah. So like I told you in the previous devlog, um, these characters or entities in our game, they have no atoms, right? They're just two-dimensional images being rendered on screen. Um, even if you're playing 3D games, um, at the end when the uh, frame is being rendered, it's all 2D, it's all virtual. So how can we get two images to collide with each other? Um, like my hands are colliding. Now, it depends on how we define colliding. Um, so for our game engine, our fake universe, we define colliding not by the collision of atoms, but by the intersection of polygons and squares. Huh. Now, what do I mean by that? Um, yeah, let me show you something. So at the moment, you can see that the main character is sort of moving under the fence, like it doesn't exist. Now, this shouldn't happen, of course, but I'm trying to explain something here, so bear with me. Um, now, this happens because of two reasons. Number one, you've guessed it, because I've turned off the collision system, so the main character is not colliding with the fence like it should. And also this happens, I mean, why our character is moving under the fence, because of how each image or entity in our game engine is being rendered meaning the main character being one entity and the fence being another entity in our game. So the fence is rendered on top of our main character, as you can see, because we want to create an illusion of death. Wait, illusion of death? Illusion of death. <laughs> another example you can see is the other character in the game. Um, I call him Totsunin but maybe you can suggest me a better name down in the comment section. Um, yeah, so because the fence is drawn over his body, the fence is rendered on top of his body, you can sort of visualize now that the fence is closer to the camera. 
meaning the fence is in front of him, right? And it's keeping him alive, separating him from the tiger. In computer graphics, this is called the painter's algorithm. And it's a technique of rendering images further away from the camera first, which is the ground in this case, then what's closer to the camera last, which is the fence. It's like a painter overlooking a scenery and painting the mountains first on the canvas, then he paints the lake over the mountain and then the trees over the lake. You get my point, right? Um, all that just to create an illusion of death. So in the case of this game engine, each entity that is added into our game is confined to a certain layer. And we push all of these entities into an array according to their layers. Then, it's just a matter of looping through the array, rendering the image that's further away from our hypothetical camera first, and what's closer to the camera last. And that is a single frame out of 60 every second. If you remember the game loop in the previous devlog, the part where we say render frame, we actually loop through this array once. So in one second, the computer looped through this array, depending on your FPS, say 60 times each time producing a different frame according to the player's input. Just imagine if a human painter did that, I mean, painting 60 empty canvases every second. <laughs> be impossible. Okay, now back to collisions. So, the fence should be in front of both Top Sinin and the player, right? So, when the player moves, he shouldn't be able to um, move through the fence, or in our case, from what you just saw, move under the fence. So this is where a collision system is applicable. If you notice, even though each entity is sort of living in different layers, if you change the perspective back to two dimensions, all the entities still live on the same 2D space. Now using this 2D space and its coordinates, we can implement our own collision system with geometry and maths. Now for a 3D game, it's going to be a 3D space, so you'll need to use 3D geometry and 3D maths. <laughs> the simplest of all 2D collision system out there is what's called the AAPB, where we attach a bounding box component to each entity in our game. Now, because these squares are living in the same 2D space, using simple logic, we can test whether they've intersected with each other. And since the bounding box is tied to our entity, if the squares intersect, therefore the entities also intersect, i.e. collide. So though our entities don't have atoms, this is how we get two images to collide with each other. So once you have this 2D space where all of your entities live on, you can pretty much use any kind of collision you want. Whichever collision system you're using, what's important is we have to get the images to collide. And once we get two images to collide, uh, we can do anything really. Um, for example, let's look at this. So you can see that our player no longer can move through the fence or under the fence because every time the engine detects that the squares intersect, which is um, the, the bounding box of the main character and also the bounding box of the fence intersect, the player is being teleported back to the coordinates before the collisions happen, right? And we can also use our collision system to detect proximity. For example, say when this character is getting closer to another character in the game, trigger a dialogue. Okay, so I think that's all for today's video. Um, in the next video, maybe I'll talk more about actually implementing the collision system and optimizing the system, which I find very interesting and tedious. <laughs> um, yeah, but we'll see. It's getting pretty late now. Um, yeah, so that is the collision system. Um, just to end this video, <laughs> Like I told you in the first devlog, um, I'll be including poetry in this game as sort of like a, um, if you haven't played Breath of the Wild before, uh, in one of the missions you know that you have to figure out hidden meanings behind a song to um, further progress in the mission. Um, so in this game, inspired by Breath of the Wild, you have to figure out hidden meanings behind poems. <laughs> um, to maybe solve a puzzle or something like that. Yeah. So let me read you one um, that should be in this dialogue. Yang kuat membaham si rusa, yang lemah dibaham si kuasa. Jika hidup tidak bertuhan, maka hidup berhukumkan hutan. Binatang makan binatang, manusia juga makan manusia. Um, okay, I think that's enough. Bye. See you in the next video.